This is Carl at National RV Detroit and I'm going to walk you through this Dutchman Coleman trailer model 242BH. This is a how-to video so I'm just going to show you some of the features and how they work, okay? Uh, first of all, this is the outside kitchen. Very simple. It's got an outside refrigerator plus you've got this cooktop that slides out, right? This is the cord you have to, or cord, this is a, the hose you have to plug in to hook to the LP system. So that plugs in right there at that quick connect. And you're all set, you just light it and you're all set, ready to go. Okay. Uh, your steps obviously fold, uh, fold into the trailer. You can adjust the legs on them to the length you want. This one just has pins in it, so you can adjust it to the, to the terrain. Um, power, furthest uh, exhaust. This is the fresh water fill here. Now the most common way to get water to this trailer obviously is through the city water hookup which is on the other side. Um, that's always the most common way but if you're going to be boondocking or camping someplace where they don't have city water you can pre-fill your tank right here and then you use the onboard pump to pump the water. I'll show you where the switch is when we get inside. Okay. Uh, you have outside speakers. This is the, the, the vent for the range hood. If you're going to be running the fan in the range hood so to vent outside, you have to pull up on that baffle right there. There's two thumb holes. Pull up on the baffle so it can flap freely. Looks like it's open right now. Uh, you can shut it when you're putting storage or traveling if you choose to, but make sure you, if you want to vent to the outside, you open it. Okay. Water heater. This is a gas water heater. And I'll show, I'll show you the... Uh, the um, let me take this off. I'll show you the switch inside. Uh, keep in mind, this is, a, this is the drain plug here. So it takes an inch and a sixteenth six-point socket. It screws right in there. Always make sure that there's water in the tank before you turn it on. That's important. Um, right now it's winterized, so it's empty. So when you, when you get ready to, to um, use it in the springtime, you're going to want to uh, make sure there's water in there before you turn it on. Okay? Um, I didn't mention back there, but this has power stabilizing jacks on it. You have uh, one switch for both front, another switch for both rear. That's simple. Okay. Pass through storage. There's your um, dump hose right there and there's a reducer for your power cord. Okay, as we come up here, you have two LP tanks which are full. You have um, power tongue jack. You got a, a, a light plus up and down obviously. Now in, there's a crank that I think I saw it inside the trailer, but it's a small silver crank. You'll see it. If this ever fails on you, you can always pull this plug, put the crank on there, crank it manually to get yourself out of trouble. So you can always get yourself out of trouble. Deep cycle marine battery right here. This is just a hookup in case you wanted to get a solar panel to charge the battery. It's just where you would plug it in at. All right. So here's the water station here. So this is your city water hookup right here. Uh, you're just going to hook the water on there and turn it on. You're all set, ready to go. Um, you have your your power here, and then you have a cable and satellite in through the trailer. And then, of course, you have a sprayer right here. Okay. Your dump tank or dump tank, your dump your your tank dump valves here. There's some more here. This one has two gray tanks. It looks like. You have a 30, 30 amp system, so it's a 30 amp power cord. And like I showed you inside there, we do have the uh, reducer to reduce it down to a 20 so you can plug it in at home. This is your black tank flush. After you dump your black tank, which is the black valve obviously, you leave the valve open. You have to leave the valve open like it states on this sticker here. Leave it open, put the hose at the dump station on there, turn it on, it'll spray out the inside of the black tank, clean off the sensors, that sort of thing. All right, so this tells us, this housing tells us it's pre-wired for a backup camera. Okay, 
And while we're looking up, the manufacturer states every 90 days you should inspect the roof, 60 to 90 days. So make sure you keep after the roof. It's in good shape now. Just make sure, uh, you know, a few times a summer you're going to inspect that roof and make sure that it's there's no place for it to leak or there's no damage that was caused by, you know, low branches or road debris flying up there, stuff like that, okay? All right, so as we go in, first thing we'll do is turn this on. This is your thermostat. You just run it through the fan, cool furnace. You can see how the, the furnace lightened up. Now it's going to start. Okay. This is your control panel right here. So to light your water heater, you just use that. That's the fault light. That's all there is to it. Your water pump is right here. Remember I talked about pumping water out of the fresh water tank. These are lights, inside and outside lights. Um, your slide room here. Your power awning here, as you can see. Never leave the power awning out unattended. Always roll it in if you're not going to beat the campsite. Uh, you can check your levels here. Batteries charged, fresh water, black, gray one and gray two. They graduate up in one third increments, of course. All right. Down here, this is your power converter. So this converts AC to DC power. So when you're plugged in to shore power, these are your circuit breakers, 110 AC, just like you'd have at home, and they're all labeled. Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here. You've got 12 volt fuses, and they're labeled. Also, this is a battery tender, so it's going to sense how much energy your battery needs. The battery up front needs is always going to keep it charged. So when you're plugged in, this power converter will charge the battery. When you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicles alternator and charge line will be charging the battery. Okay, so this is your fireplace right here. It's um, it's actually a space heater. You get a remote with it. Um, so, let's see here. You can do a few things with it. You can change the intensity of the fire. There's a timer on it. Then, of course, you have a, a temperature set, so you can do everything you need. It's a great it's a great, uh, it runs on AC power, so when you have a limited supply of LP, and it's not real cold outside, you can just run this, okay? Now the TV will plug into here. I just want to show you that there's these uh, switches here, like that one there. That one, the one on the left, you can turn it on and off. This is the signal booster for the digital antenna, so you want to use that. Um, this is your sound right here. So basically, you can read the uh, the uh, the paperwork that comes with it, but you have you can stream off a USB right here. You can go into the system through this HDMI. It has Bluetooth, so you can do wire hook up wirelessly from your phone or tablet. It has a radio, so it has everything you need, and then it has uh, I believe two. Let me look here. Make sure I know what I'm saying. Yeah, two speakers. Zone one is inside the trailer. Zone your two speaker areas. Zone one is inside the trailer. Zone two is outside the trailer. Okay. The range. Let's see here. So basically, this is the sparker. You turn clockwise to spark it. Three three center burners are for, or knobs are for the center burners, and this is for the oven. Let's see if we got gas here. Yeah. So it's that simple. Okay, to light the oven. All the way at the back, at the bottom, there's a pilot light. You can see me sparking it back there. So all you're going to do is go to the oven nod, you go to the picture of the flame, then you depress it and keep it depressed while you're lighting it. You'll spark it with the other hand until you see the, the flame light under here. After it lights, um, you still hold this in for another 10 seconds or so to heat up the thermocouple, and then uh, you go to operating temperature. Just remember when you shut the the oven off, the pilot light goes out. So you have to light the pilot light each time you use it. Use the oven. All right. These are your keys right here, of course. Microwave works like any other microwave. This is your range hood I told you about. The fan. Remember to open the baffle to vent to the outside, and then you have a light here also. Your refrigerator is a. Um, 12 volt DC refrigerator, so it runs off a of 12 volt. 
and make sure you latch it this way so the doors don't swing open and get broken. This device here is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green. If it goes off, you take everybody outside, leave the door open, shut the gas off at the front, figure out what's going on. Okay, it should always be green if not get it serviced. You can drop your table down onto these cleats here, right? And then turn this area into another bed. Sink and shower work like any other sink and shower. Uh, the toilet, of course, is an RV toilet, so it has a flush pedal on it somewhere here. Right down here. Let me swing it around so you can see it. There's the flush pedal. So basically you can't use it dry, so you have to put a dose of chemical in the bowl when you get to the campground and hook up your power and your water. Put the dose of chemical in the bowl, then you'll stand on the flush pedal and let at least a gallon of water along with the chemical flow into the black tank below and you're all set to use it. You can't use it dry because the smell will be terrible, plus it um, uh, can get clogged up, so make sure you always use chemical and water in there. Alright, so last but not least you have uh, another, this is a GFCI, there's one in the back too, so keep in mind all the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI, so if you're using the, 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 the uh, so receptacle outside in a pops, you're going to reset it in here, for example. Storage underneath the bed, you just pull it up. You have TV hookups here. Okay, and this, this will have a backing plate. It feels like it's right there. Okay. I think we've got it here. Let me look around. Okay. I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Uh, please remember what I said about inspecting the roof every 60 to 90 days. That's important. Most people, generally speaking, don't inspect the roof enough, so you want to keep after it. Um, also, right now this is in, is in uh, winterized mode, so the, all, the, all the water's been purged from the system, replaced with antifreeze. The water heater is bypassed and drained, so it's all set for the winter. Okay, thank you.